think one of the biggest obstacles for uh, Christians, at least, to think through this issue of evolution and Adam is um, having false expectations of what the Bible is actually prepared to deliver. And we see that both with Genesis and with Paul. Um, so with Genesis, for example, uh, if we remember that uh, both Genesis chapter 1, which tells the story of creation in general, and Genesis chapters 2 and 3 that tells the story of Adam and Eve in the garden, uh, both of those stories were written uh, by ancient authors at an ancient time where they had ancient ways of looking at the cosmos, of looking at humanity, of looking at well, pretty much everything. Um, we understand from uh, the, uh, you know, the, the discovery of a lot of ancient origins texts from Mesopotamia and from Egypt and from uh, the land of Canaan, for example, um, how much the biblical author of Genesis 1 and Genesis 2 and 3, uh, how much that those biblical authors shared with the ancient world. And uh, I think once we just allow that to sink in, we'll begin to see very quickly that questions of um, of origins from a modern point of view were simply not on the radar screen of ancient authors. Um, and if we understand Genesis not to be answering the question, you know, what was the first person in a let's biological, modern scientific sense, some of the tensions between Genesis and evolution may begin to subside a bit, at least I, I think that they should, because Genesis and science are asking very different kinds of questions. Um, Many people uh, understand Genesis to uh, be written in, in such a way to not just talk about um, you know, origins for the sake of curiosity, but to be uh, talking about origins for the sake of Israel. Um, ancient peoples were not all that concerned about uh, just how things came to be for no reason, especially how people came to be for no reason. Uh, origin stories were uh, also stories of particular people. Um, uh, the Israelites likely were not that concerned with, sort of as an intellectual curiosity, why did things come about and, you know, um, uh, just sort of as an abstract question. Uh, their concern was more, who are we and where do we come from? And uh, understanding uh, the Genesis stories in light of that concern will also spin the story a bit uh, that I think is much more accurate to the ancient mindset and in much less tension with evolution. Uh, in the same way that understanding Genesis in context helps, um, understanding Paul in his context helps as well. Uh, Paul was part of an ancient uh, Jewish environment uh, where he, along with many, many, many other Jews before and, um, and during Paul's time, were also um, interpreting the Bible and interpreting the Adam story. And it's interesting to see how diverse those interpretations of the Adam story were. Um, and placing Paul's interpretation side by side with some of those, it, it, it lends itself, I think, very clearly to, um, to the understanding that there are, there are multiple ways of actually understanding the story of Adam and Genesis. There isn't really one way. Um, Genesis is a very difficult text to interpret. There are gaps in the text. There are ambiguities in the text. And, and authors in Paul's time would, they would exploit some of those ambiguities to, um, to make a point that they felt they needed to make at the moment. For Paul specifically, what really drove him to use Adam and the Adam story the way that he did um, was partly this Jewish environment where there was creativity, um, afoot about um, interpreting the Bible, but also Paul's you know, obvious commitment to the resurrection of Christ, which for Paul was a, a dramatic um, shift and change in what anyone was expecting God to do. The Messiah was crucified and then rose from the dead. And that sort of um, uh, really unexpected and, and um, earth-shattering moment for Paul uh, drove him back to the Bible to uh, think very creatively about um, what is God doing here in, in, in this death and resurrection of the Messiah. Um, at the time that Paul lived, um, uh, the Jewish hope was that um, the Jewish state um, 
centered in Jerusalem would uh, come back to um, a bit of independence from the nations around them and to some political and religious prominence. And obeying the law was uh, the way to move that program forward. Uh, with the resurrection of Jesus, Paul concluded, obeying the law is not the point. Um, if obeying the law were the point, Jesus would not have had to have been raised from the dead. There's a deeper problem that God is after, and that deeper problem is a universal one, not just a Jewish problem. And Paul then refers to Adam to bring the Adam story into this, uh, I guess, conversation with the cross and the empty tomb, um, to explain to his Jewish readers, who are Christians, but in that Jewish context, to explain to those readers um, not who Adam was, but who Jesus is. That was his point. 